Hello friends, after spending a wonderful and quality time with my family and dear friends, it was time to switch on the action mode. Although I was lucky to join in my own country at Indian port, a big job of main engine decarbonization had to be immediately attended as there was an issue with the newly installed broken piston rings. As this topic is indeed too long to cover up in one go, I'll split it in parts with each part of the video will detail the various operational steps which includes removal of the cylinder head and the piston, calibration of the piston and the liner, replacing the piston crown and hydraulic pressure testing of the piston and finally installing back the piston. So friends, please do watch every part carefully as I assure you these videos will definitely help you out during your turn. So let's get started. The procedures to uninstall the piston described in this video are for MAN BMW 6S60 MEC model main engine. Before any maintenance work is being carried out, I would discuss a very few but extremely important general safety precautions which you all must be familiar with. Firstly, the engine controls must always be in the engine control room station and the telegraph system should be in the finish with engine mode. This is to prevent any accidental kick to the engine. Always stop the lube oil pump first with its control in manual mode. Block the control oil supply on the three-way valve near turning gear and engage the turning gear. Shut the main air starting valve such that the valve spindle is blocked inside the locking plate. Always shut the air supply to the exhaust valve and the control air valve. Do cut off the fuel supply for the concern unit on which the job is being performed. As an additional precaution, always do remove the valve handle. Next, you need to drain the jacket pulling water for the said unit. For this, shut the line valve on the main engine jacket freshwater expansion tank and open this vent. On the turbocharger side of the engine, the main jacket cooling water inlet and outlet lines distribute the water through each unit. Shut these lines, inlet and outlet valves and completely drain the system of cooling water. Friends, it is very crucial to relieve the servo oil system pressure on the hydraulic cylinder unit. For this, you need to shut the valve number 420 on the hydraulic block. Additionally, to drain the pressure on the FIVA system, open the drain valve number 421. You can verify the pressure drop by connecting a pressure gauge at this minimize point number 455. The system should be pressure free. And lastly, close the valve number 531 for the hydraulic operation of the exhaust valve. All these mentioned general safety precautions takes very few of your time. So please do follow them religiously. It is for your team's safety. We are now ready for the real action. Make all the arrangements for the required tools and start dismantling the connections on the exhaust valve. Dismount the inductive sensor on the exhaust valve with its cable, bracket and junction box on the cylinder cover. Loosen and remove the bolts securing the exhaust valve high pressure pipe, connecting the hydraulic damper on the exhaust valve and the hydraulic actuator. Detach and remove this pipe. Disconnect the air pipe for the pneumatic closing of the exhaust valve. Remove the cooling water outlet pipe along with its securing brackets from the exhaust valve. On the turbocharger side of the engine, 
disconnect the jacket cooling water outlet pipe at the bottom flange on the cylinder head. Also disconnect the air connection pipe to the air starting valve on the cylinder head. Remove the protection jacket and closing the insulation for the intermediate pipe also known as the compensator. Loosen and remove the securing bolts on both the exhaust valve side and also on the exhaust manifold side. Disconnect both the fuel injector high pressure pipes on the fuel valve and fuel pump side. Friends, I have already uploaded a detailed video on proper procedures to disconnect the high pressure pipes on a fuel valve. Do watch the video for appropriate techniques. Disconnect all the bracket securing arrangements and other small pipe connections from the cylinder head. Friends, please do recheck and reconfirm for any left out connection. Please do watch carefully the steps to loosen and remove the cylinder cover nuts using the hydraulic tools. As many engineers do take shortcuts and end up damaging the hydraulic jacks. Always do carefully clean the tool attachment threads of all the dirts and deposits. Apply a thin layer of molly coat on the threads of the stud. Place the spacer ring around the nut in such a position that the tommy bar can be applied through the slot when the nut is to be loosened. Select the proper jack for the cylinder cover studs and check the maximum lift for the piston of the jack. Then screw the jack on the tool attachment threads. It is very important to align the spacer ring and the jack such that the step at the base of the jack cylinder will be seated inside the spacer ring. Screw the jack until the cylinder of the jack bears firmly against the spacer ring. Now unscrew the jack approximately one turn to create a clearance between the jack and the spacer ring. Connect the hydraulic jacks with the high pressure hoses of the distributor block and the high pressure pump. Increase the oil pressure to the prescribed value as mentioned in the manual. In our case, it was 1500 bar. If at all the nut does not come loose at 1500 bar, the pressure may be increased by approximately 150 bar. Using a tommy bar, unscrew the nut on the stud up to 2 to 3 turns in anti-clockwise direction. Please to ensure the nut is not screwed up against the jack. Once all the cylinder nuts are loosened, relieve the hydraulic coil pressure and disconnect the high pressure pump and the hydraulic tools from the stud. Unscrew the cylinder head nuts. The cylinder head along with the exhaust valve is now ready to be lifted out of the liner. The cylinder cover is equipped with a protective shield located at its base. Prior lifting the cylinder cover, please do loosen the four screws securing this protective shield. Connect the engine room overhead crane hook to the exhaust valve and carefully start lifting the cylinder head along with the exhaust valve. Always align the overhead crane exactly in vertical position. During this operation, Please do go with the slow up mode on the remote control box of the overhead crane. Do keep monitoring all the sides for any sort of obstruction. Also ensure the threads on the studs are clear of the cylinder head. Land the cylinder cover on a couple of wooden planks and clean all the pipe connection surfaces. To start with the preparations to pull out the piston, open the crankcase door to the cylinder concern. Turn the crosshead down far enough to give access to the piston rod bolts and the stuffing box. Loosen and remove the seizing wire and bolts connecting the piston rod to the crosshead. Then release the stuffing box by removing the innermost screws from the stuffing box flange. Also disconnect the drain pipe 
on the stuffing box. Friends, never remove the outermost screws from the flange of the stuffing box. Then mount two distance pieces on the piston rod foot to protect the lower scrapper ring and to guide the stuffing box while removing out from its housing. Remove and discard the gasket between the cylinder cover and the liner. It is a good practice to make a punch mark in the liner and the piston cleaning ring to ensure correct position during remounting. After the marking, remove the piston cleaning ring. It is very important to remove any wear ridges at the top of the cylinder liner. Turn the piston to the top dead center such that the top of the piston is now free of the cylinder liner. The piston is provided with three grooves for the fitting of the claws of the lifting tool. These grooves are always clogged with carbon deposits. Clear all these three grooves of the deposits. Make sure to mount the lifting tool correctly so that the claws of the lifting tool enter the lifting grooves of the piston crown. Align the engine room overhead crane in the vertical position and take the weight of the piston on the crane hook via the lifting tool. Guys, the stuffing box flange is designed with a slot such that the piston rod foot can pass through it with a minor clearance. So it is very crucial to align the piston rod foot in line with this slot. To attend this position, inside the crankcase, an engineer has to attend the piston rod foot in continuous communication with the operator of the engine room crane positioned at the cylinder head platform. Once confirmed the weight of the piston is on the overhead crane, turn the crankshaft such that the weight of the piston is relieved from the crosshead. Bring down the crosshead until the engineer gets clear access to the piston rod foot. Slowly start lifting the piston out of the cylinder liner, taking care to guide the piston rod foot through the stuffing box flange slot. Once confirmed the piston rod foot is clear of the slot, then pull out the piston. Guys, the job is very simple and it takes approximately 3-4 to four hours to pull out the piston of the unit. Now it's a coffee break and to refresh the team members by sharing some jokes. In the next part of the video, we'll discuss about the major reasons for the breakage of the piston rings, complete maintenance, inspection and installation of the stuffing box. the techniques for replacement of the piston crown and skirt, the cylinder liner calibration and much more. So stay tuned with my channel to be the master in your jobs on board the ship. Wish you all safe sailing and a healthy stay on board. Guys, see you in the next video. Thank you.